Hello, everybody. Had to check. Had to check and make sure my mic was on. <laughs> Good afternoon, Turton. We are going to be doing things and stuff today. Different things and stuff, for the most part. I'm going to pause on the head, unless we get to it later. But I want to get this, um... Ah! I want to get some other big changes done on this. And I think if I put more green on the head right now, I'm just going to want to, uh not attach it because it's going to be a bit too wet and I'm just going to be afraid to fingerprint it. Hey, here it is. So first thing I'm going to do is take my green stuff here and uh, I have a pair of Teflon coated scissors to cut sticky things with. It's good for cutting tape too. I'm going to cut off a little bit of this and then the rest of it is going to go back in the freezer. I kind of have to like saw through it a bit. There. And now I'm going to snip, snip off of its plastics. It needs something to hold it. There. Right, put it back in its plastic. Yay, Teflon coated scissors. Created, no doubt, for school teachers to cut tape and stuff with. But really handy, it turns out. There. Now I have a little piece that I can keep over here on top of my little plastic bag that I put it in. And the rest of this can go back in the package and back in the freezer so it doesn't, uh, so it stays good longer. So I just put it back in this package and I will put it back in its freezer after stream. Because a few minutes won't really matter. Alrighty. How's everybody today? Happy Saturday. Alrighty. <laughs> You're funny. Yeah, I don't use them for much, but when cutting tape or cutting uh, green stuff, they are quite handy. And that the green stuff does not stick to them. Of course, it helps if it's in the freezer, because then it gets all, you know, it's, a, it's pretty stiff then. You can cut it pretty easily, relatively speaking. I still find it a little easier with those scissors. And I don't use them for everything, so they stay pretty sharp. But yeah, I mean, they they generally don't really have any, like I have a tiny bit of green, a little bit of yellow that's stuck on the back here and that's it. So pretty, pretty snaz in my opinion, pretty snaz. Not necessary, but pretty snaz. Very, very little in the hobby is necessary when it comes down to it. Most of it is uh, just fun stuff. Okay, I might have to get up and stretch during stream today. I've been doing some uh, new exercises and they are helping in general, but as things unlock in my musculature and tendons and stuff and get stretched out, then other things like to uh, complain. So let's see here. I might need to switch to a better brush eventually. I'm, I'm on the verge of wearing out one of my Kalinskis. All right, but today, today it's about putty. So what I noticed is essentially this guy has like no neck. So he's got no neck and it's bothering me. And he looks so much better with that much neck, right? You can see. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add that much neck and probably elevate his head just maybe a, I'll have to bring it out a little bit. So to do this, what I want to do is I wanna make a marker first so that I can keep things lined up and I wanna sink at least one pin um, I'm basing this uh, neck length, by the way, on the fact that I still have the Wolfen, the actual Wolfen army book from Confrontation. So I have plenty of reference art that shows that Wolfen do indeed have necks. Um, so yes, I want to uh, expand his neck a bit. I also got my new, uh, my new GW model to work on for uh, Golden Demon next year, so I'm excited. Haven't got my oil paints yet, though. So one thing I want to do, first of all, if I'm going to be extending the neck on this model, is I want to make a marker so I can kind of sink a pin in and kind of extend his neck uh, in line with a pin, at least one pin. One pin will help me like get there and then I can like sink another one to hold it stable and pack it with, with green. But I want those pins because otherwise it's too easy for the green to kind of stretch, compress, or distend as it cures. So I am going to grab my palette. I'm going to use a bright red. 
blood red in this case because I had it out. Just going to squeeze a little bit onto my palette. Grab a brush, put the head in position as for what it's really supposed to be. So it's supposed to be here. And I'm going to do a couple of marks. So the easiest place to mark is going to be right under the jaw here where I'm going to do a stripe, kind of two dots. And what I can then do is take that off and use that as a marker. So if I want to sink a pin a little bit in, I can just go directly in from here and directly in from here. And if I sink a pin here and here, I should be okay. Um, it's just like, oh, and if it's not perfect, it's gr it's fine. Because on such a big model, even a small shift of the head is not going to matter. Hey, I'm Lindersil. How's it going? So essentially, I'm just using this as kind of a, so that the head stays roughly on kilter. And I'm going to just start with one down here, because that was just it. far easier than trying to put a marker on fur, was this uh, area that didn't have as much fur. So I'm going to sink my pin vise. And the great thing about this is that I don't have, like I said, I don't have to be precise. If it shifts half a millimeter, the model is so big, I'm not even going to notice. Ooh, that went right through. So here we go. So we went right through because we didn't angle it inward. I angled it straight up and down, but that's fine because I'm going to be doing green work anyway. So I got a little bit of a puncture through here. Now, actually, I didn't go all the way through, and there's still a little bit of resin there, so I can tamp it down, and it would be fine. But I probably, I'll be adding additional fur around here anyway, so I wasn't too concerned. But that happened because there's this shelf here of resin. So I managed to paint paint all over my, uh, apparently all over my lamp the other day. But you can see that shelf coming out there, and that's why, because I, I went straight th through down here, and my pin vise came out the other end. So this is something everybody has done. So don't get like mortified about it or anything. It's easy to fix when you, when you're already using green stuff, it's the easiest thing in the world to fix. Do, do, do. Yes, it's Saturday and uh, we're going out for Japanese food tonight to a new restaurant that we haven't tried before. So I'm excited. Now here, I don't have to worry about that because I'm not going to go all the way through the head with this drill. Resin is nice and easy to drill, and uh, that's one of its pluses. It's very easy to pin resin stuff, just because the resin is nice and soft. It's not hard like metal. So it's pretty easy to get a hole of sufficient depth to really sink a nice, uh, a nice pin into for stability. And again, uh, when you're using such fine drills as I do, you should be careful and not press too hard, not torque it too hard, because it will absolutely break your bit off inside of the resin, and then you're kind of screwed a little bit. So now we'll pin this together so that I can figure out how much space I want in my new neck that I'm going to give this wolfen. So I'm going to start with a pretty, uh, pretty big band of wire, relatively speaking. And this is 24 gauge wire. It's a 0.51 millimeter width. The drill bits that I use are number 75 drill bits, which are 0.52. So 0 0.52 drill bit, 0 0.51 wire means that you get a beautiful snug fit, but that you never have to fight to get the wire to fit in. So if we just pop this down here into this uh, hole that we did, we have way too much room. Ha ha, way too much room, but this is a starting point. So now we start trimming. First, we probably should actually uh, get this wire sunk in. We don't want to go out through the bottom want it to be pretty e even. There is a lot of difference actually in Lidrasil, but the ones that you have are maybe a little bit more forgiving for newbies, I think. I started with epoxy sculpt. Actually, no, I started with green stuff back in the day. Got very frustrated with green stuff. 
like Depoxy Sculpt because like Pil like Milliput, both of those have in common that you can thin them with water. So when you're trying to smooth them into a surrounding surface, it's really easy to just add a little water and it makes kind of a slurry and you can smooth it a little bit. So for gap filling uh, stuff, I used to use Aves all the time. I'm not a big fan of Milliput just because I never used a lot of it. I found Aves to be uh, my choice in that. Green stuff is very different. Green stuff, like Aves and Milliput both work kind of like clay. You put a mark in them, the mark stays. Um, they're kind of smushy that way. Green stuff has resiliency and bounce to it. It will rebound off of your tool. It, it has uh, tension to it. Um, it will pull in masses. Instead of just pulling your tool through the putty, the green stuff will actually distort and move with your tool. Um, it's far more flexible. Aves and uh, Milliput can both be sanded. Like they draw, they do, they uh, cure rock hard and they can both be sanded and stuff. Green stuff does not cure rock hard unless you're working with a, a high percentage of blue with it. And even then it's not as hard as those other putties. Um, so, but if you're trying to do things like I did here, where you're trying to do organic forms like muscle masses, generally I find much easier in green. Uh, the other thing is that I find if you're doing rounded forms and you want them to be somewhat smooth, also much easier in green to just set yourself up right on that. Um, and that is because the, when you pull up the whole, like you're going to create this mound that kind of mimics a muscle. So other putties won't do this. They'll distort or smush or, you know, they won't do it to the extent that green will do it. So for organic forms, I do believe that green is top notch and I find it much harder to do organic forms with, uh, Aves. And Milliput and Aves are very close cousins. So I would have to assume it would be the same if I tried Milliput. So in doing the organic muscular forms and the eyeballs, the rounded shapes on this Wolfen, re-sculpting the entire head pretty much when we're done, except for the mouth, um, I felt very strongly that it was going to be a much easier and uh, better, better result using green. Once you get to know how to use green, um, using it for stuff like that and even for gap filling like I did here to fill the hole in this resin is kind of a no-brainer. The stuff that green does not excel at is hard edges, which uh, Aves and Milliput are better at. Does that make sense? Yeah. So if you ever want to like do things like I've done here where you're, you're filling, but you're also re-sculpting, I find that green is, is superior. And once you get the, I've done, uh, uh, if you look back on the VODs from the stream, I've been doing green stuff on this Wolfen for the last couple streams um, and talking about how, you know, you want to, if you want to smooth it in so that it's, it's very good, um, so that it blends in with the resin or the, whatever you're working on, you need to work it really early. You need to add a touch more yellow than blue to your mix, stuff like that. Um, I've been giving out a lot of tips on that. Let's see here. I want to take down my wire. I want to fill in this hole with glue. Just a tiny dab. More is less with super glue. And we're just trying to set a wire. So I'm going to push that down. Want to be firmly. If you need to grab it, you can use a pliers. Though I think it's probably pretty good the way it is. Yeah, I can see the end of it down here. So the wire is just flush with the surface. I'll have to uh, fix that. I do have a pliers. A fancy, fancy players, which are really medical force ups. Yeah, you don't want to sand green stuff if you're going to put it on mold. Otherwise, you could try. I mean, people do file it and sand it. It just doesn't sand like, because it doesn't cure as hard as Aves. It does not sand like Aves. So, really, the green thing is like, if you're going to sand, um, then like, don't don't do it with green if you're going if you're sculpting something you intend to put on mold. Um, sanding removes that topped cured layer of the green, and this uh, actually will impact how well it goes on mold. So you never want to sand if you are doing anything that you intend to be put on mold. So I'm actually going to trim this way down. Going to do a section like this. 
I'm not real worried about, uh, quote unquote, wasting wire because I have an entire roll of it here. It's going to take me forever to go through it all. And it's easy to get more. And it's cheap. So all those reasons. Now I can reinsert and see that's more like it. So I've got him. This is why I want to do another support, by the way, because the head will tilt and, you know, it'll go different ways. But this lets me judge how much neck I would be adding to the figure. So if I back up, it lets me see and judge whether I think that's about right. And he's supposed to be turning his head to the side. I definitely want like as much of that. So kind of like so. He's still fierce. He's still very fierce. It gives us a lot more room here between his neck and his shoulder. We probably want to turn the head so there's more on this side. He's meant to be really turning his head to the side. Yes, it works. You don't, you need to be careful with your proportions and and uh, make sure you have like equal or or more green though because it's the heat of the green reaction that that cures although you know aves just cures uh, it's sculpey sorry it's if you mix them with sculpey which is totally a thing then you can do that all right actually i do like that angle right there rar it gets his uh, this shoulder this mane closer to this shoulder i'm gonna have to build in mane there it makes the head still swivel more to the side over here. I'm gonna have to build out more there. Um, we're still more or less in line with where it is. And it brings, it brings that head forward. I like this. So now I've gotta figure out how I'm gonna anchor the back here and that's gonna be another pin. This is why I didn't just uh, attach it and why I'm keeping this other section of pin around So let us just uh, figure out where's a good place to drill. I think I want to drill up here. It's a nice flat spot. It's about right across from our initial pin. So these pins that I'm putting in them become kind of the girders of our building of our neck. like. It gives us something solid to build on, so we're not just throwing a blob of green stuff in there. It acts as a spacer for our head to keep it in the correct alignment. So once I have these in here, I may also put two more short wires here and here just to be able to wrap green stuff around and kind of have a nice um, solid structure for the neck. But yeah, you can mix a lot of other putties with green. You can mix Aves and Fimo and Sculpey and Milliput, all those. They all work. And it will give you kind of a hybrid. <clears throat> and it all depends, for me, it all depends on what I'm trying to do, what's, what I'm sculpting. I'm going to put another sink, sink another uh, prong into here. Although this may not connect to the head, it will uh, essentially give us uh, support for the green stuff. And then I probably want one over here as well. Just gonna help to hold the green in place and uh, again, serve as a spacer. Kind of giving us a four point, like the head is a table and these are its legs and the body is the floor. There. There's a heavy learning curve with it and Lidrasil. Um, if you're just doing basing stuff with it and you're happy with your gap filling, it is certainly, um, you know, you can certainly do everything with that. But if you're going to do serious, like, big resculpts like this, like, if you're going to really change the look of something where I'm just, like, doing an armature or if you slice off something and need to resculpt it for actual sculpting, um, I find it is, uh, 
it's a good tool to have in your arsenal. But it, take, it took me a long time to get comfortable with it. Just a very, 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 very long time. Like, I started mucking around with it just out of college, and uh, it took me... It took me years. But the thing I did, the thing that you want to do with it is you want to just experiment with sculpting little things. Um, oh, I forgot to place that. Well, now I can place it. So I'm going to line these up so I make sure this pin fits in. And I'm going to put a little dot of red paint on the end of this one. And then when I bring in, um, bring those together, it'll make a mark. Big glob, glob bead of red paint. So Mark, got to line up these guys so that they fit. Figure out our angle. Yeah, and then we've got a little dot, a little red dot. You can see it right there. And that will be our marker for our second hole. But yeah, green just has very different properties, but that means there will be a learning curve. My favorite tools to work with it are, um, my. I really like working with it with the clay shapers, especially the chisel point here, or the taper point rather. Um, and I often work with uh, a lot, I work with a lot of chisels and um, then this tool which has big spoon, gigantic spoon and uh, more svelte chisel. It's probably my favorite other than the taper point. And then I have a tiny, a tiny spoon as well. Tiny spoon, one of my favorite things for when I'm really getting down to the micro details. Um, so everybody, every sculptor has a different selection of tools. Okay, so we've got that mark. We're going to drill right in. So yeah, what I did over time is I just did little conversion projects. Like I did, I worked on getting used to the using the green for gap filling. I worked on like sculpting like some fur. Sculpting fur with it is pretty easy. Um, just doing little little bits of sculpting on various conversions and just kind of getting a feel for the green. And then it came to the point where um, when I was like ready to do a big project like this, my last one was uh, re-sculpting a face on a bust. Then I was ready. Then I was like, okay, yeah. Now I'm going to test. I can still wobble it a little bit. I'm going to wobble back out here. I've got a little bit of air there. That's what I want. I like that a lot better. That's just enough neck to give him a neck. Um, hello, Shadow Raven. Well, that's because you never want to like go for David in the first place, Turgeon. You always start with just little bits, like little additional bits of fur, um, sculpting a little bag for your character. Yeah, this is, I think, where I want to be. Yeah, I like this. I like this angle. It's very dynamic. It's exaggerated. It's just as exaggerated as with the main sculpt. Um, it's still here. Let's try it. Let's put it put together as much as we can to make sure now that we've got our placeholder together. So his foot goes on to the rock and his claws go into it. His other foot goes on to the other rock or the other part of the rock and it goes in. So he's leaning over and he's got one sword down here. So we've got that. So he's leaning forward on that sword. And that is looking pretty good from the side, actually looking great. Perfect. All right. So let's switch and grab his other sword, which comes out. I'm going to be doing a conversion for this part too. So he's got his other, he is, uh, he's a monster. I'm going to be bringing this a little forward, but this sword is like way out. So he's, he's definitely a model where I think if we get a little higher, he's 
There we go. So he's like, he's a big mini, and this sword is monstrous. So he takes up a lot of room. He's a big model. You can see him in my hands. So, so what I want to do with this sword is, is in its original position, it's almost hyperextending his arm, right? It's almost going backwards. So what I want to do is I want to bring it forward in a more threatening position. So I'm kind of wobbling it along this axis. axis. Um, I've carved down some stuff. I want to essentially sculpt an elbow where that gap is because it, sculpting an elbow off that muscle mass is gonna be the easiest part um, that I could do. So I can essentially, um, I'm gonna start by, I'm so far I'm just happy with this head. I'm happy with the positioning. I think it's it's working. I think it uh, looks good where it is. So I'm happy with that. We have we have tested and found awesome. So I could bring this way up, but I'd have to resculpt the entire arm at that point. I don't know if I'm ready to resculpt. Plus the bicep would really need to change as well. So the problem with really positioning an arm on a model this big is that if he's got his arm bent, you're going to get a lot more of a bulge from the bicep. It's going to it's going to be positioned differently. Like and this is not going to be there. So that's why it's problematic bringing the sword up even more. Um, but I can, I can tilt it and still have it be correct, but not have it be in that hyperextended posture that I really don't like. So I really want to swing the sword a little bit. I want to turn it upward a little bit and I want to swing it forward. forward. So then I guess to have to fill that gap back there, a little bit of a crook in the arm. That's what I'm looking for. So just minor adjustments on this model, really, to make him look a little bit more, I don't know, more fierce, more dynamic. Give him some neck. I changed the proportions just because I, I really like the Wolfen and I really want this model I really like. I love his pose um, and I can't wait to paint him. So I am just doing the adjustments that make me truly, truly love the model. I'll be all over it. There will be other stuff. I want to sculpt a bit more mane and stuff like that. But we're we're at this point we're moving we're moving along. We're moving along. We're getting there. So what I will probably do. So this arm doesn't need anything. He also has a tail that comes out the back, whoop, which I'm going to drop, um, which comes out here. But so our remaining steps that I really want to do are going to be filling in some of the neck today and uh, working on the reposition on this. And after that, I might actually start, I might start just blocking in some fur. Those are kind of my, my tasks today, uh, as far as it goes. I did straighten out his sword too. So I, I actually put the sword, it was slightly bent. I put it into some very hot water until it had softened. And then I pretty much just let it tilt. Like I just put it on an angle where it would straighten out. Of course he's a good boy. Yeah, a lot of people like like Andy Peeper and you know Bob and Julie, they're keeping kind of green, green stuff traditional live at this point. Um, because everybody is going into the 3D sculpting, uh, pardon me while I, I correct a little bit of a mold line here on the sword, uh, but there's a lot of sculptors that are going over the 3D. And the problem with that is then there's not a lot of people who are teaching the green stuff, which um, you might say, well, 3D sculpting, you don't need to know how to do traditional sculpting anymore. But if you want to do things like this, you do. You need to know how to work with the, the putties. So it's still a worthwhile um, thing to learn. Because if you do ever want to alter a figure, even if it's just a little bit, even if it's just adding a ponytail or, you know, that kind of thing, then this is this is the stuff that's going to put you in good stead there. Alrighty. So we have his head in a good posture. I like it. I've tested it. Fantastic. Lovely. Now I can glue it in. Do, do, do. Or before I do that, I should uh, put in my other posts and put in some green. So let's do that. Let's sync our posts. Where is my wire? So I want a little bit more um, stuff to hold the green in place. So I want to put in a couple more pins just for green support. But yeah, there are a lot of good classes from ReaperCon. Like that's the thing about that online ReaperCon. It's all still out there. You can just go watch it. 
Um, you can find it on the interwebs. You can watch it. All right, so now I need to put a pin in and to snip it off. Again, just want a little bit more. Ah. And sometimes your peg just does not want to um, obey you. Instead, it wants to super glue you shut. I'm trying to figure out where I sunk that hole. When you've got green on the surface, it can get problematic because, uh, yeah, screw it. I'm going to go over here with my glue tipped peg. Um, green and super glue tend to kind of melt into each other and create an unholy uh, mass. So I kind of covered up my drill hole there. I'm going to take the take the super glue off. I'm going to take my knife and I'm actually going to slice a little bit of this glue off, this green off and see if my drill hole is still there. It may have filled in with green there, I think. Yeah, there it is. Okay, I'm gonna have to redrill that. Let me get my camera down a little bit more here. There we are. So I haven't got my oils yet, sadly. So I can't uh, begin showing you guys, um, you know, how I'm gonna fail at oils. <laughs> That'll be part of future streams. Totally. So I'm going to put this peg in. I want this one shorter because his head is tilted, remember? So I'm going to guess. Going to go there. It'll at least give me uh, something to hold the green in place. That's why we're making these little... They're almost like... Think about the girders that, that construction crews put up and then they wrap like wire around it, right? And then they build concrete forms on top of it. That's what we're doing. Um, because we want to make his neck longer so I need to have support for it and when I put that in place that's actually I guessed that perfectly holy crap spatial awareness for the win it rests right on that pin that's fantastic I could even pin it if I want to but yeah good 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 yay win every once in a while my spatial awareness yeah Yeah. Yeah. For basing, it's just really good for when you want to sculpt just little things on your base, just little, like, like a little edge of a carpet or, you know, like a little glass bottle or something, you know, just candlestick, you name it. Like learning to sculpt and uh, work with this stuff is just to do little things can really uh, make your models, like the, your basing stuff really take off. All right. I'm gonna have to redrill this hole thanks to the uh, green stuff getting in the way of the uh, super glue. You can even see that it's kind of taffy-like right now, the mix, the place where it mixed. So yeah, green stuff and super glue. They make a pretty, uh, pretty demonic goo um, when worked together. <sighs> so far I've been having a very productive weekend, although I gotta kind of slack off a little bit for tomorrow since I'm supposed to be, you know, it's Sunday, I'm supposed to not be working too much. But uh, I'm working on a PDF that I'm excited about for the Patreon, which is patreon.com slash painting big if anybody wants to know. Um, I do a lot of stuff on there. I'm working on one about cylinders and the difference between highlighting them as matte or as like NMM or metallic or stuff like that, like how, how the highlighting changes and like as far as what a cylinder is, I mean, this leg is a cylinder, right? So legs and arms and there's, a you know, other shapes as well that you run into that uh, you're like, how do I highlight this? You know, especially if you're trying to do non-metallic metal. And so I did a thing. I wrote up a long thing about it. And I'm excited to get it uh, on the Patreon. I just need to finish uh, taking pictures and inserting them. 
I spent all yesterday painting examples. Ah, this green stuff just like getting in, getting in my way here, green stuff. What you doing? All right, so that one definitely needs a little bit of reinforcement. So I'm actually going to grab my clippers and kind of snag onto it and press it down. There we go. I felt it sink into the hole. Perfect. Now remember these side ones aren't lining up with anything. We just want them in there so that the green will have something to stick to. So on this one, I am going to trim it down a little bit. Maybe. Um, the head is moving to the side, so I may not need to. I may. Let's see if I nailed it. So line up the top and bottom do have holes to go into in the head. So that they're the main place keepers. Yeah, that's a little tall. It's actually keeping them from going into their place. So I'm going to snip off like a millimeter, maybe a little bit more, two millimeters. There. Um, I believe it is like exclamation point. I've got exclamation point socials, exclamation point brushes. I assume exclamation point Patreon is a thing. There we go. Excellent. Yeah, there we go. Perfect. Yeah. This, so the most obvious command is the correct command. Um, so it is a thing. Hey, I tried to do like all the, the right things, right? So yeah, so now we've got his head really kind of like rawr, roaring. He's roaring very convincingly. I like it. So I didn't actually, his head is really big on this model, but it, I didn't, um, I didn't enlarge it at all. If you look at it, the, you know, the nose still ends where it ends and the jaws the same and the back of the head is in the same place. What I did do is I shrunk the ears down by extending the skull back a little bit more. I'm going to bring a little bit more up on top of the head as well and bring more fur back here, um, as along and then fill out the mane on this side as well. Um, more, add more hair in here. So, all right, so now we're at the point where we can do that. We have a structure underlying, so we can now make a little collar of green stuff. Uh, and this is the point where if you just wanted to put a collar on him, you could just make a smooth collar going around his neck if you really wanted to. He's a good puppy. Um, but uh, since he's fierce and wild, in my mind, I'm not gonna do a collar much as I might be tempted. Uh, so yeah, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna continue to take this off for now. And I'm gonna use these four pins that we did to build up a collar of green stuff. Cool, thanks, Shadow Raven. I appreciate it. Liquid Nebula seems very tired and, and sad lately, so he is, he is taking a break. And I appreciate having somebody to, to link things. I don't know if my YouTube is on. Can you exclamation point socials for me, Shadow Raven? Oh, thanks, Xanifer. Okay, so I don't have, I just have Twitter and Instagram on there. Thank you, thank you, thank you for doing that. Thanks, thanks, Xanifer. I agree, I, uh, I appreciate it. So I need to put my YouTube on there. I'm going to make a to-do list right here. When I made those commands, I didn't have really a cohesive YouTube. Oh, well, YouTube has its own thing. All right, fair enough. There's the smarts. <laughs> So it's just not on socials. Though what I do need to add to the socials is um, my website. Although I may have a website command too, but it seems kind of silly. I should just put socials. Um, I should just add the website to my socials. Trying to make, you know, less commands for y'all. Uh, add web. Because now that the website is like fully updated, on Nightbot. There we go. Yeah, there's no website command, okay. Yeah, now that my website is updated and I'm adding things to the gallery regularly and uh, like it's the Patreon has a whole page on there that kind of shows you examples of what I uh, what I teach on each level and you know, the website's more useful now so I need to add it for sure. All right, it's green stuff time. 
One thing I will be doing is I will be also putting a little plug in here. So since I want to tilt this arm forward and rotate it a little bit, um, that's going to make the back, this back little part of the square here, that thing, um, it's like almost coming all the way out, right? It's kind of tilted now. This socket, it's the front part is still firmly in the socket, but the back part isn't. So what I want to do is fill in this socket a little bit with a shelf of green to support the new position. Then I can pin this arm together through that green stuff. It'll give it a lot more stability than just keeping a gap in there and trying to, you know, fill it with, it won't, won't fill it with super glue. Super glue will be uh, way too, too brittle. So that being the case, uh, I want to put a pad of green stuff in there as well. So we need a collar around the neck to get us set up to fill in those holes. And then we need uh, a pat of green stuff in here. I was also looking at a little bit of resculpt around the foot um, on the rock here because he doesn't fit perfectly onto here uh, where he's supposed to stand. Like his claw doesn't really go into that area. So I was thinking about raising up this part of the rock so that I can make a new, because I love how the holes are you know, the claws are like sinking into the stone. Like I rock, that's just, that's just awesome. I love kick-ass werewolves. Um, so since I love that so much, I want to build up this area so that the claws do sink in. Because right now they don't, like they look like they may have just done it, but then when you sink in there, see, they don't quite touch. Um, so I would really like just that extra couple of millimeters of stone under this paw. And this, the fit isn't perfect on this side either. So maybe a little bit of green stuff in there. Cause you can still see a bit, you can still see this socket here on the foot when it goes in, it's not fully hidden. So I do have a bit of, uh, of sculpting to do there, but that's after we've got, you know, after we've got like everything in place and we're ready to attach them to the rock. Now on things that I'm gonna attach, this is a good question, right? What am I gonna attach and what am I gonna paint separately? So my, my time honored, you know, like what I almost always do is I look at the model and I say, can I attach something and still reach everything behind it? But that isn't always necessarily the whole shebang. Um, I can attach this arm and still see everything behind it. And I can even reach underneath the stone. So technically I can still, I can still paint everything except for the bottom of the hand, but the bottom of the hand is kind of flat. Um, However, I'll have a lot less room to work on things like the back of the arm, like the back of the arm is like really difficult to work on then. And the inside of the leg is really hard to work on. And I do want to do texture, um, like leather texture on the arm and stuff like that. And to do that really well, you want to be able to have a good brush angle. You want to be able to really focus. So I feel like if I attach this arm much as I can still reach everything, I won't be able to do as good a job on the areas that the arm gets in the way for. So I would say that this arm still gets in the way and I'm still gonna leave it off uh, of the model. I do want to attach the body to the rock for sure. Cause like I said, there's some sculpting fill work that I want to do there. And also some sculpting fill work around here just to make sure that the hand looks like it's really like sitting, like really has landed on the rock and has really like set there. And uh, from some angles, it rocks up a little bit. So I want it to be a very solid, you know, standing point. It's, it's part of the power of his stance in this pose. So I definitely want a firm, solid uh, fit on that. But, but yeah, so I'm attaching this to this for sure. I'm attaching the head for sure, because I want to, I need to sculpt all that fur on there. Uh, so the head and the fur all need to be together. So, and the head doesn't block anything. It's just, it's on. So that's cool. Now the question is uh, tail. Another rule to follow when you're thinking about what to, ah, what to attach is how fragile is it? So this tail, well, I do need to do a little bit more sculpting on it, but it's very thin and it doesn't have, it fits in pretty well. Like it holds itself there but it's very thin and it doesn't have anything around it that supports it. 
So if I'm going to travel with this model or if I'm going to put it in a box when I'm not working on it or if it's going to get knocked off, if I have an animal and it's going to knock off my desk because a cat walks through or, you know, I don't personally have that, but something for you guys to think about if you do, then I won't attach it. So even though I could attach this part, it doesn't get in the way of anything and it fits in well, um, but it's thin, it will be easy to break because resin. So I'm gonna decide not to attach that. Now what I will probably do is I'll paint everything else and then I'll fasten this in and I will paint it at that point. I probably won't paint it separately. Um, I'll probably just work on everything else and just get down to the tail as the last thing uh, and do it then. Because it's not like it's super fancy, it's just brown fur uh, if I paint him like his, uh, his concept art. So then there's this arm. We've already decided this doesn't get attached. Those two don't get attached. This does get attached. This does get attached. So we are attaching all of that. And I've already glued him together at the waist as maybe you didn't notice, but this also, he uh, was his torso was separate from his lower part. So then we just have this pesky arm. And this pesky arm follows another rule of why you wouldn't attach something. So not only, um, does it, for one thing, okay, it doesn't block anything, right? It's out, way out here in the middle of nowhere. So it does not block anything. Uh, it is, however, fragile because that long sword blade is certainly fragile and able to be broken if it's dropped. And how are you going to paint details on this when it, you're trying to balance an entire body off of it? So there is such a thing as just ease of painting. And this is also the reason I don't attach dragon wings. It's the reason that I paint dragon wings separate and you can see that, you probably have seen that on my uh, stream for Reaper lately where we've been working on this wing. So we've been working on this separately, not just because, you know, I don't know if I'm going to even finish this dragon, but because, because it's just easier to paint this if it's not attached to a whole dragon. Um, anybody who has tried to paint a large model like this, a big dragon or another big monster, knows that there comes a point when you've got the whole thing together where you're trying to just paint it and it's just awkward to hold. And if you're trying to do, God help you if you're going to try to do detail work on it or fine textures or anything that requires like getting close and being really stable. If this was attached to the body of the dragon, like the whole dragon would be hanging off the end of it. I wouldn't even know how to keep it stable. Uh, so that's a, that's a lose in my opinion. And this sword, while pretty plain, I may decide to do like some glowing runes on it, or I may just do a really cool NMM effect on it. And to do that comfortably, I need to be able to hold it comfortably. I need to not be worrying about a whole heavy wolf hanging off the end of the, of the arm while I'm painting this. So for that reason, because it's fragile and also because if I'm gonna do detail on it, it's gonna be much easier to paint if I don't attach it, similar to a dragon wing, for that reason, I would not attach this arm. So what I'll be doing then today with this is I will be blocking in a wedge of green to fill this part so that I can eventually pin the arm on. And I will be actually building up some putty on the back of this arm to fill in the elbow. And then kind of like just kind of holding it up and, and fitting it that way. And then once the elbow has more or less cured, or at least the block in of it, then I can go back in and I can, you know, refine it or whatever. But I can make it so that it fits really well in here with almost no gap. And then at the very end, if I need to fill a tiny gap, I can do it um, once I'm ready to attach the arm. And I have no fear of painting over green stuff. There, you really shouldn't. Like I could paint this whole arm to a high standard, paint the whole body to a high standard, fit the two together and use some green to gap fill. All you have to do is put a little layer of primer over the top and, and just fix it. So what you really need in order to do that, and you know, fearlessly, is you need to be able to do smoothing with green stuff. One of the, probably the, the hardest things to do with green stuff. So I need to be able to get the green stuff to get really thin and smoothly, uh, smoothly blend in to the resin on either side in order for that to work you know, for me to not have a join mark essentially. So that's another reason like to get good at green. If you want to be able to do this sort of thing and you want to be able to paint parts separately and then attach them well with a good join without showing the join, you don't have to prep it at all. You just put primer on it and paint it. Heck, you don't even really need to prime it, but it's a habit. So I do it anyway. 
and also because it's green, I just like to have a coat of white over the top, depending on what I'm doing, or black and white. If I'm if I'm doing sketch style, I might just do a black undercoat and then white. But green is just easy to paint over. It's just there's no problem. You could paint you could paint your own greens. Um, people have done it. So and you may not even need to prime it, but I just it's habit, so I do. So yeah, so then we've got three things three different things that I will not be attaching right away on this model. Although, you know, he's, he's essentially it's both arms and the tail. Um, and again, for the reasons you've got, in the case of this, I want to be able to reach stuff. In the case of both of these, they are fragile and easily broken off. So if there's, there's a long time left for me to paint, then I'm just risking it if I glue them in early. And finally, this piece is just more comfortable to hold in my hand to paint fine details like runes or non-metallic metal or leather texture. So it's going to be much easier to paint super fine details on this and to make sure all of, everything looks really cool if I don't attach it. Does that make sense? Oh, it, I mean, it won't, the green itself won't bleed through. The green color, you know, is you just need to paint over that. But yeah, if you put a primer on, obviously it's going to be another layer of protection so that you don't accidentally rub it off and show green. Um, so yeah, so that's my thought process. And this is true of any large model, whether you're doing green work on it or not. Um, those are my thought processes on when do you attach a part on a large model or even a small model. Yeah, the color. Um, it's when do you do it and when don't you? So that's, that's kind of the question. Now, I could also say... Keep this in mind. If I wasn't so sold on this rock, and I may, I may actually hold off and and you know th rethink what I just said, because part of me really wants to get him on this rock, but another part of me is like, uh uh uh, and let's think about the sword rule. What's the sword rule? It's going to be really much easier for me to do all this leather texture and all this paint and cloth texture and all the fur texture. It's going to be much easier for me to do that if I'm holding it in my hand like this and not if I'm trying to paint it like this. So you see what I mean? Because the rock kind of gets in the way. So that does impinge on whether I can easily... Yeah, yeah, I can go out and do a stretch. Thanks for the stretch uh, stretch for you. <laughs> yeah, I should also. Um, but that also would be a reason not to immediately put him on the rock is if I, and I'll have to weigh that because like I said, I want to do some extra work puttying around his toes and on the rock itself. So I may decide that it's worth it to me that I'll just work with this because I really want him in place so that I can do the doctoring that I need to disguise some of these places where he's really not fitting all that great. Build up some stone around here so that his stance is more solid. I can still reach everything back here just fine um, with him on the rock. Now, the biggest thing is probably just painting the rock if I'm sitting here and holding it all the time. It definitely would be easier not to have him attached to his base to paint him. Like, it's easy enough to get this stuff, but yeah. I'll have to go back and forth on that. And the answer may be to put the green stuff down on the base here and just kind of moisten it and press him onto it to make the shape I need to at least, you know, get a start on it uh, and then to just work from there. I mean, there's a lot of stuff I would like to do on this rock. I would, there's, there's a lot of cool kind of tool marks and stuff on it that Joaquin put in um, that I'd like to retain. Uh, they really go with the art, but there's definitely places that I want to build up a little bit more and disguise. Like I haven't even bothered to take this uh, mold line completely off because I know that I already want to cover it up with a different skin of green. So, so yes, there's stuff to be done on this rock for sure before it can be painted. So who knows, it may end up being the last thing I paint. It may be that I just don't attach him until his whole body is painted. The rock itself is easy enough to paint once he's attached. So, and I need to come up with a plinth to put him on. I haven't even thought that far. Ah, so all right. We that was a discussion. And yeah, I do need to stretch for a second. So hold on while I take a slug of coffee. Because it's coffee day. And then I'm going to do a quick stretch. And if you've been sitting for a long time, you can feel free to join me. Let's see here. 
I don't want to put this where I will remember to take it and put it in the freezer. Wee! But yeah, doing more stretches lately. David had a neck, neck issue pop up the other day and it's made us both more conscious of stretching. It certainly made me more conscious of stretching. So hamstrings definitely need help. And then we will put his collar on. Put his collar on, fill in the elbow, and I'll probably whip out one of my anatomy books and block in the, um, the elbow real rough. Because it's totally doable to, uh, you know, to, to just use a really rough, just rough rendition of the elbow, I guess, as a way to put it. And then to go back over that with another layer of green and refine it. So we can build it up. And that's uh, probably the better way to go about that. That's just like building up, bulking up green on top of an armature, which is how they do it. But I have a couple of... Uh, couple of good, probably I want dynamic anatomy. I might actually go for one of the superhero books because they would have probably the right anatomy on the back of the arm as well. Oh, I did forget one stretch I need to do though. Sorry. Sorry. This is exciting actually because I don't often get uh, to like look at all of these great um, anatomy books that I have from... Uh, from art school. Some of them I actually uh, acquired uh, at recommendation far after art school, uh, at recommendation from the sculptors. Because anatomy is, you know, something you've got to learn if you're going to do a scratch sculpt. So I've got all these uh, really cool books both uh, superhero and uh, traditional. Probably one of the most classic anatomy books on the planet is Dynamic Anatomy by Bruce, Ho Bruce Hogarth. Uh, let's see if I can find a good elbow. Let's see, he probably has this. Uh, let's see here. Nope, nope, he doesn't have it. He does have details of anatomy. He's got some great, he's just got some great renditions in here. All right. There's a lot of history. No, no, Bruce, please get me to the um, pages where you actually talk about elbows. I need elbows. He kind of gives you a history of, uh, of art, like the human form in art, which is kind of cool. But probably the chapters that are the coolest are like the chapters on building masses and like the inner, how forms are interrelated and stuff like that. He goes into pretty deep detail on the head and stuff. But I don't need heads right now. I need elbows. Please give me an elbow. Oh, oh we're getting there. We're getting there. We're onto the back and neck now. And the turning of the head. Up, oh, up, oh, there's an elbow. All right. Good. Yay, elbows. So the part I have to sculpt is there. So we've got two muscle masses. And the reason I love Hogarth's book is that it's just, it's really crisply rendered so that you can see the shapes clearly. So you've got essentially the bicep comes down like a triangle almost, and it fits in between these two muscles here, the triceps, right? You've got the shoulder muscle lat. I don't remember. He's got them all. He's got them all uh, labeled. But then you've got the bone, which is actually, this is a tendon and the attachment points of these two muscles, then you've got the elbow. So that's simple enough. I think I should be able to extrapolate that onto my wolfen. So I'm gonna put this book down so I can see it. And I'm gonna hopefully get to that, that blocking that out. So let's look and let's see what forms we have here. Cause sculptors don't always, they're not always great about sculpting forms the way they would be. Um, like here, we have the kind of the triangle. We've got, we've got the tri, there's, this is a biceps. So like, we have to pay attention to how the sword is actually posed at this point. Cause this is just a weird, this is a little bit weird. A little bit weird here, sculptor. Yeah, I guess the bicep is divided. So they did do it. 
they did do it this way. So I'm looking for this. So I might correct this because what we've got is we should have two muscle masses here and here, and this should be a more narrow because this is the triceps coming in and this is a tendon. This tendon is really broad, as you can see. It shouldn't be quite that broad. We should be seeing some muscle connections coming down here. So what I can do is I can uh, kind of re-sculpt this area because green stuff. Um, I can look kind of at what I should do. It looks like I should take out this mass a little bit just looking at it, or at least I need to create kind of a triangular shape here. Instead of this big wide shape, we need more of a triangle. And then this comes down to an elbow here. So I think that this will actually work pretty well. Just looking at my anatomy books. Another cool anatomy book, if you want to kind of start learning, especially if you're drawing and you like, um, you like fantastical stuff, um, is Drawing Cutting Edge Anatomy, which is uh, put out by, hold on, the Cutting Edge comics books are all fantastic. So, Comic Book Artists, uh, it's by Christopher Hart, and it's put out by, by somebody I can't see because their imprint is too small. And my eyeballs are not big enough. Uh, WG. Okay, so just whoever does the Cutting Edge art books, I didn't, I didn't, I thought they may be Image Comics, who also have um, a lot of stuff. But the Cutting Edge Anatomy stuff is great because it is very very comic book it's gonna break everything out for you deltoid that was what i was looking for so it's another great anatomy book to have the hogarth book is very classical and very traditional but if you want to like do exaggerated musculature the comic book um comic book one is great and it also uh shows you the difference between like a more a more normal human, the way to depict more of a normal human in comic books, and then this then the muscular superhero type, and then the overmuscled kind of Hulk brute type, and how to exaggerate those forms. Yeah, any anything like that is gonna have a decent anatomy book if it's like any any like type of comic like that. I could I bet that there are some really good manga books out. But I find that the, um, I like the cutting edge ones. The, I've got both the cutting edge comics and the cutting edge anatomy and they do a whole bunch more. Uh, but yes, and but I do like Hogarth just for his pure, like his the real clean forms that he does for sure. Alrighty. Uh, okay, green stuff it is. And I've misplaced my tiny piece of green. Oh no, did I eat it? Oh no, it's got buried under my knife. I accidentally put something on top of it. So we have our piece of green. And they always give you more yellow than blue, which is, you know, kind of sad, but true. Also, the blue is really goopy and it tends to ooze out and stick to things. So make sure that you always put it down on top of a plasticky thing that you can easily pull it off of. Do not let it stick to your desk. You will be at it a long time trying to get it off. Mostly unsuccessfully. As you can see, it even wants to stick to that plastic. So I'm gonna grab a chunk of blue and I'm not actually doing smoothing this time. I'm only doing blocking. So I'm actually gonna take equal parts, yellow and blue. If I'm smoothing green in, or if I'm in a situation where I expect to be smoothing it into the resin and trying to make a seamless join, I want a slightly more yellow than blue. Like 40, 60 at most. But with this, I'm making big blocky forms and I'm planning to sculpt over the top of those. So I really don't need to be that, that yellowy. I don't need to finesse this. Now I need to look at my blobs and see. It's like six hot dogs, eight buns. It's exactly that, Turgeon. So these look like they're very, very close. And so I'm happy with this mix. Excellent. I tend to smoosh it so that the blue is on the outside because the yellow is a little bit stickier on your fingers. And it's already going to stick to your fingers. Be aware that, that green stuff is not non-toxic. You want to wash your hands thoroughly before you like play with your dog or your cat or before you eat. 
after you use this stuff. Be good. Do not stick green stuff into your animal's fur, as I have heard it happen, has happened in sculpting house, households in the past. It was accidental, but, you know, come on. Do, do, do. All right. Sweet. We have, oh, wait, oh, we've still got blue and yellow. Look, see? See? Oh, not fully mixed. It was lying to me. Let's do a little bit more. I must have stuck to my finger and uh, just not fully mixed in. Now, once this is mixed, we have at least a half an hour, usually a bit more, to play with it before it starts to really cure. So at its fresh state, there's definitely things you can do during, during the fresh state that you uh, can't do further on and vice versa. So if you want the green to hold fine texture, you have to wait for it to set up. So if I wanted to do hair and do this, the fine strands in there, I wouldn't be able to do it with fresh green. I'd have to actually do the lumps and then wait and then shape them and add the fine detail toward the end of the curing process. Now this is a fair amount of green, but I've got a substructure to put it on. So I'm gonna actually sniff off a little bit with my fingers because I wanna work with that over on my elbow. And I'm just gonna get this green pulled out. All of my super glue should be dry now. I'm gonna wrap my collar around this. And I'm gonna grab, I might need to actually mix up more green. So I can kind of tamp these like down. I can uh, smush it around and on top of my pins, and I should. But this gives me a good, yeah, I'm gonna need to mix up more green. So I'm gonna take this and I'm going to, I need to remember to leave a little bit of wire sticking up down here and here. But I don't need wire sticking up there. I got these uh, measured out pretty well, so once I have this squished down, I should make sure by pressing down that I can see my wires coming like right to the top of the green here. Because that means it's going to be flush with my wolfy head. And we do not need to be elegant or pretty about how we're putting this green on. We uh, only need it to build up kind of a, a fill in, right? Because we only need it to fill the gap between the head and the existing neck. So I will get my wires lined up here. And I'm gonna pop it on there and I'm kind of look. And it's okay to be um, filling in like, like leaving globs like this because all that stuff we can just build more fur off of. So kind of looking at where I've got pretty good this. Now we're getting a kind of like a bulging disc. We're getting this over here. This is not bad because this fur is gonna be coming out onto the shoulder. So having kind of a blob here is not a bad thing. We can work with this blob. This blob is okay. Um, we do need more on the back here. We've got a big hole there and all around the top of the head. So I'm gonna pull the head off here. I need to fill that gap and I need to fill more in the top. So let's get that. We're pretty much just building a barrier that we can build fur up on top of. Boop, boop, there. A bit more here. So yeah, the green stuff, uh, we go through green stuff really fast at this point. We're doing this big of a shape. I'm just gonna tamp it together. I'm gonna kind of smush this uh, green down inside. I want the green to adhere a bit to the resin. So I do wanna not just smush it around the wires, but also because green is sticky, it will stick. And this is also where green is different from Aves or Milliput. Green is sticky, it will adhere. So although I am putting in things to help reinforce it with these pins, green itself will stick to the resin. Quite well, actually. Especially if you tamp it down when it's this sticky, when it's this fresh. So that's what I'm doing here, is I'm tamping that down, kind of blending it in, 
even though it doesn't matter if I blend it in because there's going to be more fur and things sculpted over the top of it. It's really just a filler right now. But by doing this, I, I stick it to the resin. So it has, even though I'm going to be putting super glue in here to attach the head with these pins, the green stuff attaching to the neck of the model here is a good thing. That's okay, Babel. You've just missed a whole bunch of awesome stuff. <laughs> I'm sorry. You've missed me talking about why I will attach or not attach various parts of the model. That's probably the, the most useful thing. And early on, I also went into, which I was kind of just continuing there, I was also uh, explaining the difference between green stuff as opposed to like Milliput or Aves, quite at length, actually. So if you are interested in that, you should catch the VOD after I'm done. So I'm kind of crafting this. We also talked about anatomy. Man, this is actually a pretty good stream. Maybe I should, uh, do you think I should save this one, guys? Maybe I will. Boop. Wolf and sit, stay. Let me, uh, let me put a note down. I don't change, I don't save every stream now. Um, I just save the ones that I feel have a lot of really good, useful info. Uh, so info on putties. Um, info on when to attach, to attach parts. And um, info on anatomy books. Anatomy, conversions, books. Excellent. Um, Turgeon, I could just have put a big blob down there, but without my guides, without the, um, without my pins, green distorts. Green will not just stay in one position. The weight of the head, the head might swivel or turn or fall because the green's not strong enough. It's not going to hold that position. If there's gravity acting on it or another stressor, it will deform. So for me, I felt because I'm going to be doing a lot of fur buildup around here, that doing a collar meant that one, I didn't need as much green stuff. So saving me on green stuff, it's not cheap. Um, and two, this is just be just as stable and probably just a little bit um, easier as far as like establishing a form to stick to. I'm gonna test it again. But yeah, if I put a big glob of green stuff in there without having, especially without having all these pins, it would be very easy for that green stuff to deform. The green's flexibility is also its, um, can be its Achilles heel sometimes. All right, that green now fits like really well in there. We still have a little bit of a blob here, which I probably can roughly shape into fur. There's a big gap under here, but that's okay. We'll, uh, we'll be sculpting into that, so that's all right. Likewise here, we're gonna be putting a big blob here to build fur off of. I'm probably gonna mix that up and actually do that now. There's no reason not to. Putting more green on top of other green isn't gonna cause the underlying green to cure like less or anything. Yeah, I just think it'd be a waste of green stuff. We don't need it, Turgeon. Like we're already, I already went through a big chunk of green to do this. So I feel like there's no, no reason to do it. Once this is cured, I won't be able to like really punch through it. It's thick green, especially if I'm sticking it down. So at that point, it's just a waste of materials. All right. So I want to pull out, pull out some of this. I want to suggest some fur shapes so I have less to do later. We do have fur coming down here that Joaquin sculpted and we can play into that by pulling some of this putty down onto there. Let's get closer. So I'm using my shallow spade here. I really like this tool actually. It's a dental, it's just an old dental tool. 
Um, it's a pretty common shape, I think, in sets of metal sculpting tools or wax carving tools. Uh, so I'm just pulling this down in the, into those leaf shapes that the fur was in. And here, kind of pulling my putty over, trying to establish a couple of other little shapes that I can build on that go with those shapes and still look like fur. So like these guys. I am going to need more green stuff. I am running out of that. We'll have a little gap there because we pulled some green down. You can see how the green does distort. Thanks, Shadow Raven. I corrected. That's the problem with getting close with this. It's just easy to get off, off screen. That's the eternal fight of the uh, Twitch streamer and the YouTuber. Is that when you're when you're so zoomed in, you have a very small area to stay in focus. So I'm just gonna like mark in kind of where I want that fur to be. It's kind of leading off of this fur and off of this fur. Um, and I'll probably be extending it and putting more fur on top of it. So here, I just wanna, I wanna mix up some more green is what I want because I feel like I want more. So while this is setting, I'm gonna mix up more green. And we'll put an additional, we'll start working off like bigger locks of fur now the thing you don't want to do is get yourself in a position where you've got soft green in this collar underneath and then you're trying to push like work other harder or other soft green off of it. You're likely to just push in the walls. So there is a limit as to how much we're going to build up on this like in this session. I really just want to build it up, give me give myself some rough shapes of furry fur type locks to to work off of after it's cured. The great irony of this, which David raised with me the other day, is that the guys who run Journeyman, they are, they're fantastic guys, first of all, but they love, love, love the original art on this piece. And I'm changing so much about it that even though I'm putting so much work into this wolf, even if they, they start a painting competition next year at Adepticon, I probably would lose <laughs> because they love the original art so much and I'm changing so much of it. But I'm changing it because I'm changing it to something I love more. So it's all valid. It's just I shouldn't expect to like win their painting competition with this piece. Because I am uh, altering it uh, quite a bit. Quite a bit. So we're getting some more, some more green stuff. I'm taking it off the other side this time. Because like I said, green will absolutely leak out of the plastic it's in and attack you. Um, kind of like the blob. Or it will attack wherever it is placed unless it's on top of plastic. And by plastic, I mean like cling wrap or plastic bag plastic. All right. Once again, I'm going to, by to make sure you have a roughly the same size after you pluck it out, kind of roll them into little balls and take a look and see. These are real close. I probably could use a tiny bit more yellow. So I'll grab a tiny bit more of that. And uh, yeah, there we go. The blue wants to stick to me because it's evil that way. Then we'll mix up another blob and then we'll plop that on there and we're just bulking stuff out. And at the end of it, we should be able to glue this head on. And then any additional work that I have to do, I will have to do with the head attached, which will be a little clumsier than just holding the head in my hands. But um, in some ways it'll be a relief because I can hold on to the body instead of worrying about fingerprinting the head. Let's put our Rari head right here, Rar. So yeah, any questions? Yeah, I want to say also to what I just mentioned when you asked if I why I didn't fill in the hole and I said just saving materials. Um, a green, green is, for what green is and for how much you go through, green is pretty expensive, uh, can be. So if you're going to like do big projects like this, you're going to go through a lot of green stuff. So saving a large chunk of it right there is actually saving you a good dollar or two, probably. Um, oh, is Shimmer Scale available? Separately or as only part of the Fey expansion, Turgeon?
Because if Shimmer Scale is available separately, then it's take my money time. But if it's, you know... If it's only in the expansion, then uh, then it's again back to me thinking about... Ah, okay. Yeah. It's back to me thinking about if I really want to shell out $50 for four fairy dragons. <laughs> Some of those pieces I can paint on stream for Reaper, so it's not a big deal. But at that point, Reaper should be paying me. <laughs> If I'm working, if they're worked on this, if it's stuff for the company stream. All right, so now I have I have another glob, a very sticky glob of green stuff sitting here, and I'm going to put it over on my plastic while I look at this head and see if I really, I mean, I might be able to glue it on right now. I feel like I can. Gluing it on, the advantage of gluing this on now is... As long as I'm okay with my pose, and I think I am. Um, just imagine that coming at you. Like, seriously. Wouldn't you run? I would run. Um, <clears throat> but anyway. So the advantage of doing this right now, gluing on those pins, would be that we can do what we did down here. We can take the green and smooth a layer of it up underneath this fur. Re fur and that uses the green, as well as the super glue and the pinning, to adhere the head to the model. Yeah, see, that's going to look good. Right where I brought that fur out, once I get another layer in there, that's going to look good. I am happy with this. I'm happy with the pose. I'm excited. I'm nothing I love more than a giant werewolf that's roaring. Yeah. Like, we have more neck now. He feels like he doesn't, like, he's not short-headed. I really like the way the head comes forward. He's really looming at you. Yeah, rar. Very rar. Oh, nice. Well, I'm glad that, yeah, I'm glad that Kickstarter's, like, that 30th anniversary dragon really punched it up. Like, it's got, and plus now we're in our last week, right? So, yeah, the Kickstarter will start to move. It'll be interesting to see if we get a greater curve at the end than we did at the beginning. Um, I am planning to go... Yeah, Imla Drusil, I will, I, I'm planning to go to ReaperCon. The only uh, monkey ranch in that is our new puppy. So this week, our puppy's mommy is going to be bred. And then five weeks after that, we'll tell, we'll be able to tell on ultrasound if she has puppies, um, which gives me, so like, it gives me a, a greater chance to actually be getting a puppy, which means that, uh, if I have a new puppy, I'll be coming to ReaperCon, but I don't know, like, I need to make sure that, like, I have puppy sitting, and that's gonna, like, be a, it's gonna be a drain on my, like, what I can do. So essentially what I'm saying is, if we have a new puppy, I, I'll come to ReaperCon, but I won't teach. Um, because if I have to, you know, puppies, new baby puppies need a lot of attention. Uh, if, unless I can set up like my ex to puppy sit or something so that I can teach like it, but I'm so distracted at ReaperCon that it's like, it's going to be a back and forth. Yeah. And they're not a lot of work, right? Cause you're trying to teach them the kind of the rules of the road. Right. So yeah, the new puppy will throw a monkey wrench in. I still want to come. Um, but it would also mean that I had to drive to ReaperCon. So I might not come till Friday. I don't know. I mean, ReaperCon, obviously, since I'm still a Reaper employee, 19 years and counting, ReaperCon is like the, the con I helped build. So I love to come to ReaperCon. I always have fun hanging out with everybody. And I love to talk to y'all. Um, and of course, then there's the award ceremony. So, but with Puppy, then there's a lot of question marks. So it's, I'm going to leave it up in the air I may look at this and go, do I really want to do two days of driving there and two drives of days of driving back with a puppy that's only 10 weeks old? You know, that's, yeah, it's kind of, yeah. <laughs> and we don't have anybody here that I would trust the puppy to. I've got people in Denton I would trust the puppy to watch, but I don't have people up here that I would trust to watch the puppy or that I know to watch a puppy. So... Yeah, so the puppy is going to throw a big monkey wrench in. Now, if five weeks in we find out that puppy mommy is not pregnant, then I'm off the hook and Reaper Cons ago. But we do have our hotel room and, uh, you know, so we are planning on going. All right, yeah, I love this wolf. He's cool. All right, so let's do that. Let's, uh, let's glue this on. Let's do it. Let's, let's just jump in. We can always break it off, by the way. Like, even with those two pins, if I want to break the head off, I'll be able to break the head off. 
even with the green stuff, if I decide that that's what I want to do. But here and now I'm going to commit. I'm going to hard commit to this. Now, got to slot those in. One, two, press. Rar. Is that the pose I want? I have a little bit of time to adjust. I feel like that sank in a lot. But I feel like, I feel like that's good actually. Double check. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like that's working. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Yeah, my, my yes vibe is definitely yesing right now. Yesing. So yeah, the plan is to come. The plan is to come in Lidrasil. I would give us a 75% chance of uh, showing up with, uh, with as usual. And the only thing that could throw a monkey wrench in is the baby. All right, I think I'm good. Excellent. So now what I need to do is definitely fill out this side of the neck so that we have more space. Yeah, I feel you, Shadow Raven. I have a fear of flying. I just kind of like try to put it out of my mind because there's still places I want to go. Plus sitting in a plane for, like you say, three or four hours is like, ugh. It's hard on you. So I get it. All right, I'm gonna pinch off some of this green. I'm gonna be a little more cautious about how I'm applying it here. I'm gonna twist it into a long kind of snake and I'm gonna pop some up under the jaw here and I'm just gonna kind of trace it around. Once I've got it kind of putting roughly where I want it, I'm gonna grab my tools and work with it that way. Boop, boop. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, when I'm around, I tend to be bopping around. Although I was doing a lot of work on this guy at uh, Adepticon. Like I was, I was pretty, uh, I did a lot of like just sitting and working at Adepticon this year. Though I also did a lot of running around. So, because there were things to buy in the vendor hall. There were Wolfen. There were Wolfens to buy. Had to do. It had to be done. So part of this got caught on the fur here. That's fine. Oh, my phone is blowing up. Probably just odd stuff. So I've got a hollow up here that I need to fill in, but I'm putting at this point, just a band around the neck. I'm probably gonna put a little bit of a cut into it so that I can build fur layers off of it. And here, here I'm gonna um, just kind of fill in and then once I've got it cured, I'll probably actually press it in just a little bit so I have some space. I'll take a skin of green and fill this out a bit more. Yeah, and this is still in line. This jaw, the line of this is still in line. I want this tendon to come up here for sure to connect to the underside of the jaw. So I need to keep an eye on that. So I will need to resculpt the neck just a little bit here. Yeah, overscheduling for classes is always dicey. Like at the one time, one thing you can like, you know, you can learn a lot from a lot of different people. On the other hand, it's very easy to hit overwhelm and not remember the vast majority of what you learn. That's why I always caution people at ReaperCon to always go, if, if they're in doubt, to go with one fewer class rather than one more class. Because uh, it is very easy to, to hit Sunday and just have no more, no more oomph. And to find suddenly that, you know, you haven't allowed time for practice what you've been learning. It's key, I think, to like come out of class, sit down, review the notes, and maybe even practice a little bit. Like that's the ideal for learning in like learning almost anything, I would say. But this hobby, especially with this hobby's emphasis on, um, you know, actually doing right to get better. 
So what I'm doing here, guys, is I'm pressing the green in two different places, two different directions, to adhere it to both the head and the neck and to kind of like just build in, fill in the form here so that we can get fur going on. Yeah. One serious and one fun a day. Yeah. Yeah, I feel like one serious class a day, if it's like a class that's pushing your boundaries, like a class that introduces material that you're really not familiar with and, um, you know, like that you have to think about, a class that really makes you think, um, one of those a day and sit down and practice. And one of the great things about ReaperCon, which you don't necessarily get, you don't really get at Adepticon, is that since the instructors are all hanging out, you can practice and then bring your project to your instructor and say, I tried to do what you taught us in class. Can you tell me how I'm doing and what I need to do better? And that's like the great strength of ReaperCon. There. So pressing up, filling in, always checking, kind of seeing I need to put a lot more mane in here, but I'm, that's going to make me happy because I felt like he needed more hair anyway. Double checking, double checking my pose. He's really, really twisting his head really extremely now. And I feel like that's very comic book. I like that a lot. Yeah, I like that. Okay, cool. Yep, that's smart in Ledersil. Super, super, super smart. Yeah, I always tell that. I always tell people that. They're always like, and like, no, no, sit down, practice, because... They've done studies on this stuff, like 70% of the stuff you learn is falling out of your head within that first hour. So, uh, your note, taking notes will help. Painting in class so that you have an example to take with you helps a lot. Or, uh, if you can't do that, taking pictures of the instructor's models, as I did with Sergio's. I have both with Sergio's class. I had, uh, his stuff was really out of my comfort zone, so I took a lot of pictures of his models, and then I practiced hard and saved my class model. There. So we've got kind of a collar built up. Ah! And that's a good place to start from. So now... I've got kind of this little ridge of fur, and now when I come back in, I'm gonna be bringing in more fur. And the cool thing about doing this sort of a re-sculpt is that you can do things that maybe the sculptor wouldn't have done that way because they couldn't have put it on mold easily. So I can do some fur texture here that would have been super hard to put on mold that they might not have done, but that I think looks better, um, things like that. So that's one thing that really helps. But you can see I have a lot of room here. Look at that big gap between the head and the rest of the wolfen. So there's all this fur to fill in, and I still need to pay attention to this musculature down here. Um, so, yeah, and I may need to correct that tendon a little bit, kind of sculpt over it a bit um, or widen it out, which makes sense. He would have huge tendons on this head anyway because he's used to biting things and, like, ripping them apart. So his neck musculature would probably be insane. Um, so yeah, and then just more fur up here. I wanted to thicken up this fur so I can add more fur, uh, more fur down here, more fur, generally more fur. The vote is for more fur. Um, yeah, so that's, but the, but the head is on. Grr, 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 grr. Yeah. Cool, 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 cool. All right, I'm happy with that. And like I said, if I decided after a while that I was not happy with the head position, then I can I can just take it off. Like if I if I twist it, if I cut the green and then twist it, it'll come right off. And I can trim it down and I can reattach it. And I can do whatever. So we have uh we're not it's not like the only super glue is the one holding the pins in, and that's pretty easy to break those out. So you can always change it. It's not like we super glued two resin pieces together that fit really well. Like it would be pretty hard to break this guy across apart at the waist right now, for example. All right, well, let's let's talk about our elbow. Let's see. First, I need to grab a little bit of green that I was saving, and I need to do the thing where I fill in this socket a little bit. So remember, 
we're going to kind of like put in a, this angle, right? So that means that this, uh, this side of the socket isn't going to fully connect, right? Because it's going to be tilted. So I want to build a pad up in there where I can rest the arm in the appropriate position and then later um, drill into the green. Hey, Fan, Fan Quad, how are you? We are, uh, we are re-sculpting Wolfen, because why not? So yeah, repositioning the arm now. So first thing first, gonna just fill this in. Not totally, but gonna make it a wedge instead of a, a square pit. So I wanna grab uh, probably a smooshy spoony tool, like kind of this one, like these that I don't use too often, but make sure I'm on the right side. Then I'm gonna build a ledge. I'm gonna smish it in here at the top, bring it down in an angle. Probably actually need even more green than that. Kind of fit, bring it back here. So right now at that angle, I get a bit of a gap there, which is good. It doesn't take too much. That might be enough, but I kind of want it forward. So, hmm. Let me see here. I'm gonna attach him to his base. I'm gonna pull this up out of the way for a second, guys. Hold on. I'm, I'm elevating you. Sound effects included. All right. Let us get this guy on his base, get his paws in there, and then I'm gonna hold him there. I'm gonna see what I really want. So he's normally more like this, which is his arm going way back, but I don't like that. So I can carry the arm forward with minimal effort. I can carry the arm forward a bit. I can also rotate it. I do think I want that rotation. I think I do want the sword more like that. So, okay, I think I've got my angle. Sit, stay. Sit, stay, Wolfie. There, we can go down now. There we are. Sure, sounds good. Yeah, no, I'm gonna do the scratches in the rock. He already has um, some. He already has these little holes where his claws punched into the rock. And I think that's just too awesome, Trojan, so I'm totally gonna do that. I'm just gonna fill in some of the area on the rock here because it doesn't quite mesh. You can see some of this rough buildup stuff. And this is something that, um, what's his name, Joaquin, who did this sculpt, like he's kind of known for that. Like for the underside areas, everything's very rough. Like he just kind of throws it together and, and, and he spends a lot more time on the focal point of the figure. And then he, he roughs out. It's almost like you're looking at a painting where somebody did a really good job on the figure, but then the background kind of fades out and gets choppier and choppier, um, which is a pretty standard oil painting tradition. Actually, it's a standard tradition in art, right? De-emphasize the stuff that isn't like the most important. I'm gonna put more green stuff in here. Um, but it, it means that, you know, if I want everything to come together really well, that I should do a little bit of cleanup. So I'm gonna smush this green in here. Smush, smush, much smushing. And I'm gonna take it back here. Again, I'm making a wedge. I'm making it very deep at this one end because I want it really, I want the full socket to be good there. Um, and then I'm gonna fit it. I'm gonna fit it and rotate it. Kind of see, like I want it to fit kind of like that. And I've got a little bit of the, almost like a bulging disc coming out through there. And see, it's an adhesion. I told you the green was could be an adhesive. So now I can kind of sit here like this. I can put the wolf in on the rock and check my position because green will stick to uh, stick to resin. So it will, now it will flop a little bit and it's already like sliding in the socket. So I need to bring it back up. But I think, I think that angle is gonna be good. And there was a little water left. See how now it's made an imprint? That's the imprint of the socket here. So because that has made an imprint, now I know exactly where the socket fits. So I'm gonna dry tech it again to make sure, cause there's still water there want to make sure that that imprint is formed correctly. So let's get this guy. 
I had him fit really well a moment ago and then there we go all right we had it there and then we moved it and then it's like that it's a little better got a little tendril of green off of that but in general I think it's it's done well. I just flipped my green onto the floor though, so that if I don't want it to stick to everything, I must rescue it. One second. However, I did use up all of it, so. All right, so we've got a nice socket there now that we know the arm will fit into. So I can kind of clean up the edges here. Kind of pluck it out. Take the extra green out of there, kind of smooth it into this uh, glove. Because it's really fresh, so it's totally impossible to smooth it in. Uh, I'm going to use my big spoon here. Add some water. And press it in. Ooh, that's a lot of water. And I'm just really smoothing this into the leather. And I've talked in other streams previous about how um, if you're trying to pull the green real thin over a surface to blend it in using a metal tool to start with is a good idea to just press it down and make it lie flat. And then once you're there, using a more rounded tool to put a softer pressure on it to flatten it out nicely and to smooth it out nicely is a good tactic. It's gonna get to the point where like, you know, when it's time to paint this sucker, I'm gonna be like, seriously? <laughs> I've spent so much time, so much time just setting up the, uh, the model. But I think we're gonna be okay there. Okay, now, got a lot of water there. I think I wanna put even more water in there. Give me, give me lots of water. I'm going to flood this area actually now. Kind of pull water over the whole, whole surface just so I can again do a fit without anything sticking to my resin. So once again, kind of making the arm fit in there. Kind of rotating it out till it fits just to make sure my socket is working. And there's that bend of the arm that I want. See the bend? So great. Now I know my socket is good for exactly the position I want. It should fit together great. And that means it's time to think about elbows. So the back of the model has this uh, part that is not very realistically sculpted, sadly. All right, it was nice seeing you, Emily Drusil. Yep, have a great weekend. Yeah, I won't be going on for much longer. Spent over an hour and a half at this point, but. So the next step is to build up this elbow and to essentially make this look more like muscle groups that it should be. And we were using Hogarth for that. Those who do are not have art and art um, backgrounds. This is the anatomy book. Uh, Hogarth, Burn Hogarth, Dynamic Anatomy. He breaks everything out so lovely. Let's see here. So we're looking at this part of the arm. So essentially what we have here is we've got the triceps, right, which is split into two muscles, and we've got this long tendon that goes down to the elbow. And here, sadly, we just have this, the, this scoop is supposed to be this tendon and uh, we don't really have very good definition on the triceps. Like this is all one mass. It's not two separate masses. And we're missing this triangular cut here, right? So what we need to do is probably define two masses on the triceps um, and make more of a triangular form here and narrow the tendon here. So bring in these muscle masses on both sides to make them look more like this. Um, so this is like corrective anatomy, essentially, where the sculptor kind of just glommed together something that kind of looked like a triceps and a tendon. And uh, they didn't really, you know, it's, it's there, but it's not great anatomy. 
So if I'm going to re-sculpt an elbow off of that, I need that tendon to be realistically wide. And uh, in other words, a bit more narrow there. Um, just a bit though. I mean, he does have a chonky arm, so he's going to have a pretty broad elbow. And you can kind of look at your own elbow for reference, right? Although your own elbow, if you look at it, is only about half the width of your arm. So that means that really my tendon here ought to be about half the width and I should get these muscle shapes and the, t and the connector tendons here. This should all come together in three, three kind of connectors and then you have the elbow because you need that to work. So I love this picture because it just shows me exactly what I need to be looking at and what I need to be working on. So that is the next project, the next section of this project for the Wolfen. And I think, hmm, as I grab my arm again and look at it, the nice thing is that since this arm is fully in a sleeve, um, you can really do whatever you like. Like you, it, you don't have to worry about connecting anything more than to have that elbow there. So I think I want, I think I want to bring this a little closer on this side. And this is the angle it's going to go in at. So the elbow is going to be more here. So I kind of want to shift things. Since I'm rotating the arm, I do need to shift a couple of things here um, to make sure that I've got the correct placement of the elbow on the arm. So I do need to pay attention to that. Um, let's see here. I don't, I'm trying to decide if I want to dive into this or if I want to leave it for next time because it's, uh, it really is like, once I get into it, it's probably going to take at least a half an hour and I think I've got nine minutes. <laughs> so maybe, uh, and we're out of green stuff. Like I've used up all my green stuff at this point too. So maybe now is uh, the time to stop just a little bit early. I'm going to put my last blob of green on here and just kind of blend it in. So what we did today, what we did today, we did a lot of cool stuff. Uh, a lot of green work and we got a lot of things blocked in. So then next Saturday, next Saturday, I'm actually gone, actually. So all y'all know, um, I have to plan my wedding. <laughs> David and I are going down to uh, Carmel to see if we can isolate a place to have a little ceremony um, in uh, one of our favorite little towns down there. Uh, so we're on kind of a fact-finding mission for the for the wedding, uh, which we hope to have be this fall. Uh, so we, I will not be streaming because I will be in Pacific Grove trying to figure out where I'm going to get married. <gasps> Go figure. <laughs> so yeah, so you can blame uh, blame the wedding, blame David for proposing. <laughs> but I will uh, I will not be here next Saturday. I will be back. I believe, let me think, what have I got? Let me check. Let me check before I say that, but I'm pretty sure I am fully back the following weekend. And that we will be, uh, we will be, oh, we'll be playing, you'll be playing in person for once next Saturday. Cool. But yeah, let me see. Let me see my schedule. Just make sure. I wouldn't want to mislead you guys. So next Saturday is the 30th and I am in, uh, definitely in Carmel. And then the week after is the 7th and, oh, that's Mother's Day weekend. Dang, I need to get a Mother's Day card for my mom. Okay, everybody, reminder, get Mother's Day cards for your mom. <laughs> um, but yeah, other than that, uh, I'm pretty free. So you can expect me to be uh, here streaming not this coming uh, not next saturday but the saturday after first saturday in may i'll be on um, we look pretty clear um other than that like i've got things here and there but we're looking pretty good so yeah expect me to be off next weekend and back after that thank you all for coming uh happy and it's most important yeah. <laughs> but you guys make me happy too i like doing these streams they're super fun and i'm really having fun with my wolfie He's, uh, he's coming along really well. I'm very happy with him. I think he looks very fierce. He's very fierce. Rrr, he's very fierce. He'll be even better once his swords are on. Um, and then I can correct and get this fur filled in. Yeah. Yeah, I'm very happy. I think he'll be really cool. I just love this dagger. I love how he, like, leans on it. Rawr. So for his colors, just real quick. His original colors, um, he's got concept art in here. There we go. So let me back up. Mm, girl. 
There we go. So the original concept art from the Wolf and Army book, he's this guy down here. So he has a light brown fur and, uh, and a more reddish, darker brown um, mane. Uh, I'm going to paint him a little more naturalistically than this. I really want to uh, make him maybe a little, introduce a little bit more wolfy markings, like traditional wolf markings to him. Uh, more like his big friend up here, where he has like darker and lighter spots. Like he's got darker fur and then a little bit lighter. Um, so yeah, but I think I am going to use, I'm going to use some of his colors. I am going to go for a light, light golden brown. Yeah, he is. He is a ginger. So I'm definitely going for the green eyes as well. Um, yeah. And I don't know the rest of the color scheme. Uh, he has war paint on his back as well. Wolfen do war paint or to, some of them turn it into tattoos, but essentially it'll come down to having markings on his back. Um, his original studio paint job for this model actually had blue leather, like dark blue leather. And I kind of like it a little better. So I think I might go that direction. Um, or I'll make the pants blue, something like that. You know, I feel like it needs a little bit more. The other thing is that the blade was painted, um, with the runes kind of igniting on the studio paint job. And I really like that. So I think I'll keep like kind of the blue, but make the runes on the blade fiery. Um, but yeah, so that's the original art. It is really nice art. Um, I'm about to, to tie it up, Pendrake. We added, um, there's some really cool original concept art for the wolfen in here too. But as you can see, there is a neck involved. Like they do have necks and this guy just did not have enough neck. So now, now he's going to have enough neck. Yay. So very happy excellentness. Um, yeah. So yeah, Pendrake, I was just about to wrap it up with just recapping, um, that, what, I, what colors I was looking at. I'm still thinking about it, but I know that the golden fur is going to be a thing. Uh, I may go a little darker brown on the mane and not as red. Yeah, it's pretty much got four minutes left in it if we're doing it. But yeah, we did a lot of, um, we did a lot of fill work. I did some, I set up a substructure pendrake with pins all around the neck. And then I used that to make a nice solid um, collar of green stuff to keep the head in place, in position. Then I filled it in so that we could uh, start sculpting fur essentially to fill that in. I also got the um, elbow situated where I created a new socket for it so that it would sit in its repositioned, um, repositioned way. And we talked a bit about anatomy. Um, I was using Hogarth's uh, dynamic, dynamic anatomy to assess the elbow here and what I need to do to make uh, the anatomy make sense. Um, Raid Wapple. Y'all want to go read Raid Wapple? He's going to do crazy things with oil paint. And eventually I will too, but they have not arrived yet. They, I did get my shipping notice though, so... Fingers crossed that uh, in like a week or two, I will receive oil paint. It's cool rating the waffles. Everybody's doing it. It is. <laughs> Wapelius is two L's, right? Here, I will go over and rate him. Raid. Thanks for tuning in today, guys. I always appreciate your company. All right. The raid has been created. So thank you so much for everybody for showing up and yes, and next, again, next week I'm canceling. We're going to be down, um, trying to find a site for our wedding and then we will be back the following week, the first weekend in May. Thank you. And of course you can always catch me on Reaper's show in the mornings as well. All right, let's raid the wobbles. <laughs> Have fun everybody. I'll talk to you later. Bye-bye.